Today, let's talk about our favorite music gear that we like to use when we leave the house. And we'll have a special guest come by. DJ, time to brush your teeth. Ethan. Yes? My whole world has become a studio, and I found that I'm leaving the house a lot more often than I used to. Okay. As a result, I've curated my top two favorite pieces of travel-friendly gear that, you know, I've grown to really love and get my creative juices flowing. Guess what? I've also curated my top two favorite pieces of gear for traveling. You know, if I'm on a plane, I'm at the beach, at a cafe. So uh, maybe we should talk about it? Let's talk about it. Okay. So it might be obvious, but I think the most important piece of gear you need as a traveling musician is a good set of headphones. And I think a good set of headphones for a traveling musician is something that folds easily, something that's compact, that isn't too big or bulky. Yeah. And you know, you gotta think about things like closed back or open back headphones. You know, if you're gonna be on a loud plane or in a cafe or something like that, you're probably gonna want closed back. They're not gonna sound quite as good or as natural as open back, but yeah. I think, you know, if you're in a loud environment, you're gonna want that. So there's plenty of buyer's guides about headphones, and this video is definitely not that. This is just gear that we happen to like and we happen to use. So these are yours. Why don't you tell me a little bit about these? So yeah, these are the HD9s. Um, I've had them for a couple years. Headphones in general, I have three kind of criteria that I like to hit. Okay. The comfort, Yeah. number one, then the sound. Yep, okay. That I wanna make sure that if I'm working with someone, yep. they have the exact same headphones. Sure. And I think that eliminates a lot of, oh, I'm hearing this. It's like, well, do I know, is, is that real? Is it the room? But if we have the same headphones and I know she or he is using it, I'm pretty confident. It's like, all right, well, we're talking about the same thing. Sure. These are very, very comfortable. I've worn them for hours. There may be better headphones out there. And I'm not a headphone expert. <laughs> These are just ones that I like. Sure. And they go well with, with the other equipment that, that I've used. I don't get any surprises when I move from these to my monitors. Sure. So um, I really like them. Well, I don't really have a favorite set of headphones. I've got a bunch. I've tried so many over the years. Right now, I'm kind of using these $32 Amazon specials. I, I don't even remember the, the brand name. One Odeo A71. Um, and they're not that great. You know, the, the base is kind of overrepresented. But there's a couple of nice features like a removable cable. And they are super, super comfortable. I like the fact that they're kind of inexpensive. So if I'm bringing them on a plane and I, they break in my bag, I'm not going to be too upset. But they've been pretty durable. But yeah. I've just noticed yes. that, that these have a, like a lower back tattoo. <laughs> they do. Look at that. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Is that their logo? I have no idea. But I probably should invest in a nicer set of headphones. You know, I've, those are really good. I recommend yeah. the HD9s. I do like this. This yeah. is nice. And, and, and actually, the cool thing is that it can, you have a quarter inch on this side, or if you want to reverse it, you've got an eighth inch on this side, which Dude, is pretty cool. That's actually really cool. It's a neat feature. Yeah. Um, which is pretty, pretty useful. Uh, these have a neat feature too, which is that if I fold them like this, it's kind of like origami or like one of those Chinese finger traps, and you are unable to get no, them back out. I try to like yeah. unfold them. I, <laughs> I can't figure it out. Yeah, I, I did it wrong. I think it's like, oh, oh, I got it that time. Okay, cool. I mean, so yeah, I wouldn't recommend these one Odeos, but they're, they're all right. Oh, there's the, the ones that I'm lusting after are the yes. Bear Dynamic DT990, the, like $300 headphones. Sure, yeah. Which at that point, you could just like strap some studio monitors well, to your head. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Not great studio monitors, oh, yeah. but still. Sure, exactly. I think the Sennheiser HD 400 is the one I was looking at. Yes. There's also the AKGs that a lot of people use. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we could talk about headphones all day. Yeah. Let's talk about something else. Yeah. What's next? I recently upgraded my MIDI controller. I got a Mini Lab 3. Oh, this is adorable. <laughs> I love it. Uh, what about the wood sides? The wood sides. The real fake wood sides. Yeah, the industrial design here is pretty pretty cool. I like this thing. So there are three things that uh, I think a MIDI controller should have. Okay. And this one's got it in spades. The key bed is really good. Yep. And uh, I use it for automation. Okay. And the price has got to be right. Sure. So my previous one was about 100 bucks. Okay. This one is slightly an upgrade at $109. Oh, wow. An extra nine. What does that extra $9 get you? I think the paint around the display to make it look okay. like a larger display. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Okay. Um, but uh, no, the, the encoders are incredible. They're not clicky. Oh, those are nice. And yep. uh, the build quality is super good. I just really like it. So how have you used this? Automation. Super critical, especially when you have two parameters. Okay. That's where it comes into its own. There's no way to do that with a mouse. Mm -hmm. You do two passes, I guess. Sure. But this, you can really, 
you know, filter cut off and something else. I was using it to do kind of like real time mixing. So like I'd have, I was doing a student film. So you have, you know, dialogue, music, okay. and then sound effects. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I like this thing. And it's also relatively compact. It's pretty light and you can throw it in your backpack and you're not gonna break the thing. This is something that I can't even find anymore. It's like some generic USB MIDI keyboard controller. There's I mean, no, it's clear. There's no brand name on it or anything. Oh, wait, what? There's no brand name. And it's, it's a little broken. I think one of these keys is messed up, that one. So at the time, this was the smallest full-size keyboard uh, MIDI controller that I could find that had no extra buttons. I think there's only like octave, I gotta tell you, octave I, up and down. I don't hate it. Yeah. I mean, it, the keys are terrible, but it was I was mainly going for the form factor just to try to get like something as small as possible but had full-size keys. And unfortunately, this isn't made anymore. I think this needs to exist. I think there needs to be something like this that somebody else makes. Uh, I agree, I agree. That is full-size keys but compact. So yeah, can't buy this, don't buy this, it's not good. Um, you should probably buy this one right here. Yeah, no, this is, this is I am super happy with this. Yeah. I mean, even though they're smaller. Sure. This just feels way better. Yeah, totally. All right, so one of the most fun musical creation tools I've used in the last few years is Koala Sampler. And you know, on the surface, it looks kind of complicated. There's a lot of buttons, but so much thought was put into this design that makes it like super easy to use. Everything's intuitive and you can make songs and samples and sequences very quick. And you can also add tons of awesome effects and it's fun. I think the thing that I love about this the most is that this is just, like one of the most fun pieces of music gear that I've had in a long time. If you start here on the sample section, you can see that each one of these things is a sample. And then it's really easy to record a sample. And then once you have all your samples in there, you go over the sequence tab and you can sequence some stuff. I put some sequences in here already. So let's just start here. What do I have here? And it's very easy to record sequences too. So if you have one right here. And then you can take your sample and you can add some cool, uh, cool keyboard effects. And then when you have everything in there, you go over to this perform tab. Do a little bit bit crushing. A little filtering. Stuttering. And then you can switch to a different sequence. And I, I, the thing I really love about this is just how easy it is to make something incredibly fast. So yeah, this is probably one of my favorite pieces of music software ever created. I only have one question. Okay, what's that? Where did you hear about this? Uh, uh, you told me about it. <laughs> okay, just one thing. I, okay, okay. I don't remember where I found this, but yes. um, listen to this. <laughs> How great is that? I know. It's good to have a Wilhelm scream in, in our in our video. Uh, you know what? Also, we need to uh, we need to bring in our special guest right now. I think uh, DJ, time to brush your teeth. Okay, so why don't you uh, do something cool with Koala? <laughs> make some other cool sounds. You make one. Okay. <laughs> do another one. <laughs> How about Charles? You do one. Can I do one? One more. Okay. You want to add a couple more or are you good? Two more. Okay. Okay. And you do one. Okay. All right. So now you know to click on the sequence button when you want to make a sequence, right? You want to do some cool stuff with the keyboard? Which selection? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? Can you go to the perform and show us some of the effects?
What are some of your favorite effects? Like reverb? Ooh, Bit Crush. Whoa, freaky. That was awesome. Thank you, DJ. Time to brush your teeth. I know, she's pretty good, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, the cool thing with all of this stuff is that it's really easy to export those tracks to Ableton. Ableton, yeah. You can even sync this stuff to Ableton, which oh, is Oh, it's got cool. the live... Uh, uh, Ableton link or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, Koala, I love it. Dude. All right, next on the list is a portable recorder. Okay. This is mine. This is how I carry it. I've had it for a while. Ta-da! Ooh, you got a little stand for it. Yeah, uh, and it's got the magnetic feet. Oh, uh, okay. There's three things I use this for. This is the Tascam DR? DR05. Okay, cool. I use it to record live when we play live, mm -hmm. right on the front of the stage. Okay. I use it to do soundscapes. It works really well with those headphones. Mm -hmm. Pop them right in and kind of walk around. I like to get weird stuff. My dishwasher is breaking, <laughs> the, the, the spring is making this amazing sound right now. Like, it sounds like a laser. It's awesome. The third thing that I use this for is drums, especially okay. when I'm going fast. Put it on a tripod, boom, right at chest height, and I just get a beat going. I've had it for 10 years. Really? Yeah, uh, I have two of them. I lost one at a concert, and it came <laughs> back to me, magically. How? Uh, I, I had it in a pouch, and I wrote, you know, cash reward, and I put okay. my name and number, and uh, they got back to me. You know? 10 they, years later. Yeah, it was the company that was hired to do sound at this festival. Okay. So they just had it in their office forever. <laughs> and then finally someone was like, we gotta send this back. They were probably using it for that 10 years. They're like, oh, this thing's pretty cool. The SD card didn't have anything interesting on it. It was just <laughs> our show. Oh, that's funny. Nice. Have you ever used one of these? I have. Actually, I've got something similar right here. I didn't realize how small this oh, wow. DR05 was. This is Zoom H5. And I've had this one for a long time. I actually have two of these as well. Is this two parts? Is yes. It? So this okay. is one of the cool things about the, the Zoom H5 is that these come off. Oh. You know, it's kind of a proprietary um, connection, but there's other microphones you can use. Huh. I also have a Zoom F1 field recorder, which you can take that same uh, microphone and throw it on this, which is kind of cool. That is uh, cool. I generally use the, the field recorder for like videos and stuff. These ship with like a lav mic. But this other one right here, the H5, I've used for all sorts of different sounds. The cool thing about this one, it's got XLRs with phantom power, which yeah. is kind of nice. I don't miss that on this, but I, yeah. I do lust after that because sure. then you can take board feeds. Yeah, you know, exactly. A stereo mix from the board. But in general, like I like this a little bit better in terms of like the build because this oh. is flimsy and I, the other one, it, it broke. But this does have a case and I never carried it in the case. So if I had kept it in the case, it probably wouldn't have broke. <laughs> But yeah, I think they're all good. You know, if I didn't need to plug anything into it, I probably would have gotten this one. One of the things I really like about this is unlike Koala, you know, you're not gonna get a text message on this while you're, sure. while you're hunting around. It's distraction free. And I, I think it's becoming more and more common to do dollless, whatever, you know, sure. the modular synth, if you're a live looping guy or if you're like, a, whatever, I'm seeing a lot, lot more dollless, dollless, dollless. Here's my dollless setup. Doesn't mean you don't have sure. Ableton, yeah. et cetera. It just means, you know, you're also, here's my setup. And I have a four track and I've yep. been using it more. You pretty, pretty quickly are like, oh, I, I want to cut that up. I, <laughs> I want to do a save as. I want like the, the, sure. the nostalgia goes away very fast. Yes. Yeah. That was mine. Okay. I did more recording on that than probably any other device. Yeah, that's the Akai. DPS-12. DPS-12. It had the like jazz the discs. Jazz discs. Yeah, wow. one okay. one gig. You know what? We're old. Yeah, <laughs> we're old. Kids watching this now are like, "What's a jazz disc?" <laughs> yeah, we're old. It's a big zip drive. <laughs> What's a <Duh>. zip drive? <laughs> so obviously, this is not a buyer's guide video. This is just gear that we happen to like and we happen to use. Would you agree? Yeah, I would be well stocked for several weeks, if not months if I somehow was in the weird situation of leaving a burning building onto a desert island uh, with this gear. Um, you laptop. You need a laptop, laptop too. Okay, yeah. so you need that and a laptop. Yeah. Might be nice to have some food. <laughs> shelter. Maybe shelter, water, clothing. Yeah. Okay, so our bag's getting pretty full, but at least our music gear is so somewhat compact. Yeah. All right, thanks so much for watching.